gotta have a title. I don't know what a title is like on a car. Mm -hmm. House has got them cool. You gotta have a clear title mm -hmm. to sell the property. And you want clear title when you get the property. So we're gonna look at the ways title affects property at night. There's one. Oh, there's one. Okay. <laughs> we got about five sections that we're gonna go through. Title insurance, deeds, escrow, special processes and warranties we're going to look at. Title insurance, first thing we got here, what's insured? How is it insured? How do they find out there's good title to it? You're just going to take the seller's word, oh yeah, everything's good. No, somebody's going to have to go through and look at everybody that's owned that property. Anything that's been recorded against it. Marketable, insurable, and cover all these things. Title policy. I've gone out on the internet to get resources because I found some of these people can explain a lot better than I can. So we're going to go here to the internet. There's a link. If you're on the website, uh, put your PowerPoint into slideshow mode. Mm -hmm. And once you're in slideshow mode, all these links will work. It won't work if you just in the PowerPoint. So we're going to look at this. It's, it's a lot of stuff going on with title. I've actually got a, a grant in here from somebody brought me where the, the government had granted them this piece of property and they described it with the legal descriptions that we looked at last time about the northwest quarter, the northwest quarter, mm -hmm. and that, that's how they described this little piece of property. Uh, that's what these title folks do. They go back you've got a legal description. And remember, a legal description was not just a street address. It's got to be more than that. A surveyor must be able to find the boundaries of the property. Mm -hmm. What they're doing is once they find which property we're trying to research, then they go back and look everything that has happened to that piece of property. And that's what the title search is all about. They'll search down through here, And they're looking for anything, encumbrances, limitation of the title, something that affects the owner's use. There may be, remember our deed restrictions mm -hmm. on, um, um, what was he had a deed restriction on? Y'all remember? Mm -hmm. um, mm -mm. It was uh, the defeasible, defeatable, like if you have something in that deed, that says you can't sell alcohol on this property and you want to build a convenience store there to sell alcohol, well, the title search is going to turn that little restriction up mm -hmm. and you'll be able to say, well, I can't use it for that. They might not have known whoever put the property on the market or the owner that sold it to you. They might not know that was on there. Mm -hmm. They may have inherited the property. You just don't know what's going on with property until you get into this title search. Mm -hmm. Some liens will be cleared at closing, like there was a mortgage on the house before. All right, when you go to closing, you're bringing new funds to the table that will pay off that old mortgage. Well, as of right now, there's still an, an old mortgage that's a lien on that piece of property you're buying. But that gets cleared up at closing. There could be other liens on there. There may be a lien where you didn't pay your federal income taxes. Well, that's a lien on the person, not necessarily that price on that property. And any money that that owner is going to get is probably going on to the internal revenue. He's not getting a check that day. But those kind of liens get all cleared up, and then you take the property without any liens. You may still have some encumbrances on it, like an easement. That will show up in our title search. Things that won't show up in the title search will be like there's an encroachment. Where is that going to show up? Mm. Survey. 
Okay. <laughs> and when the surveyor goes out, to look, well, there's a garage sitting halfway on this property. This property right. Well, the title people, they don't go out and look at the property. They're doing all that from a computer and going to the courthouse and looking at the records. Here's what's been recorded against there. Now, there may be, um, um, like where I live, the very back part of my yard, there's a 15-foot easement under the power line. The power line is actually on the the property line between our house and the next house, but there's an easement of 15 feet in my yard so the trucks can get down through there if they need to work on the power lines. Mm -hmm. That easement will be recorded, but it won't affect the property. Other than I can't put a fence there and block them. Mm -hmm. um, but those are the kind of things we're going to turn up here. That's what we got down here. We got. The reason you do the title search is to find out these things that may be uh, affecting your property. Now, there was a fire in Chicago. I don't remember when that was, but the Great Fire of Chicago burned most of Chicago, including all the land records. Mm -hmm. Oh no, mm -hmm. how do I prove this is my land? Mm -hmm. That's what launched the title insurance business. Is there are some people there that got together and said, okay, we can come up with an insurance policy to protect the owner from others coming in to claim an interest in their property. And that's how title insurance got started. Mm -hmm. People put up some money saying, we can do this. Um, let's see, what else? Uh, deed restrictions, they're in there. Reservations on the title, that's in there. <coughs> um, mineral rights. If you own the mineral rights, uh, it's probably not saying anything in the deed. But if you don't own them, it's probably got a reservation. You don't own the mineral rights. Mineral rights can be separated too. You may not just own the uh, coal rights, but you may still own the gas rights or oil rights. You may still own those. So it can be separated out, and the title search is going to pull all this up, and you'll see, oh, I can't sell all the coal under here after all. <laughs> um, encroachment, that's not on there. Let's see what else we got. It's still on encroachments. All right, that covered that. Um, I've got to learn how to get in and out of these. Alright, here's a little, oops. Let's talk about marketable title versus insurable title. And we've got a couple of definitions here. When a title is marketable, it means that the chain of ownership, that's title, to this property is free and clear from defects. And defects is what we're just talking about. There are restrictions on your ownership. There may be liens on it. The other one is an insurable title. That's where the title insurance agrees to insure against these defects. Well, they're going to list all the defects, and we're going to get to some of them here in just a minute. Title insurance insures something that happened in the past. Okay. We're used to insurance, that we buy our car insurance and our homeowners, which is hazard insurance, we buy that to protect things that are going to happen in the future. Mm -hmm. Title insurance protects something that happened in the past, such as maybe a, an unrecorded uh, mechanics lien. You can get an extended policy that will cover that. It may cover uh, unknown heirs they'll come up and say, well, I own part of this property. Well, they're going to have to prove it, but that's what it goes, uh, that's what it covers. Things that happen in the past. Two types of homeowner, I mean, uh, title insurance. You've got an owner's policy, that protects the owner's interest. And you've got a lender's policy, that'll protect the lender's interest. Uh, normally those are issued at the same time, at closing, and there'll be just a small charge to add that second one. 
Your total cost for a title policy is going to be about $600 for every $100,000 worth of coverage you have. And it wouldn't be much less than that if there was no lender's policy. Alta recovery, that's a, um, extended. That would cover like those unrecorded mechanics liens would be covered in a, an extended one. Mm -hmm. Now, in our uh, contract here in Birmingham, the Board of Realtors approved contract, it says that if it's a cash sale, the seller will furnish the title policy. But if it's a financed sale, it'll split between the buyer and the seller. And most of your most of your sales are going to have financing on them. You have every now and then, maybe 20% will be cash, uh, but most of them will have some financing. Uh, there's your 600 per hundred thousand, uh, and we got that difference in the past and future. Here's a title chart. You can see um, how much it is. You've got the owner's title policy. Then the lender, if you add that one, it's only fifty dollars more to add that coverage. And then they charge you to go search these records. You know, they, they, somebody's got to look at the records. They charge them three hundred dollars to do that. There's a new charge that has popped up uh, a couple of years ago called this uh, ICL. That's an insurance uh, policy that you're paying to ensure that the closing agent doesn't run off with your money. Uh, <laughs> they just started that? It could happen uh, because these guys are handling millions and millions of dollars running through their escrow accounts all the time mm -hmm. and you know they may think well Mexico's not that far. I got ten million dollars in my account. I'm gone. Well, that's what protects you is that twenty-five dollars. Uh, at first I thought well you know this is money you shouldn't be paying but then I heard about a couple of attorneys that actually did that mm -hmm. ran off with the money so I'm thinking well $25 is, is insurance mm -hmm. maybe save you a world of hurt <laughs> clear marketable title that's the seller's responsibility when you close out of when he sells his property his main responsibility is to give you marketable clear title. If he can't do that, then you don't want the property. No, you can't because what that means is you can turn right around and sell it without having to do anything to the title. Mm -hmm. And you don't want to have to do anything to the title. You can bet that's going to cost a lot of money. What that means, uh, if there's something wrong with the title, that's going to be a cloud. There's a cloud on the title. Cloud um, could be a lot of different things, but we talked about two or three of them already. They're just something that's going to affect the... the it's kind of like a little storm over your title right now. Well, the wind will blow it on off if you get it taken care of and you can close the deal. Um, they also must uh, give you the property free of any encumbrances. And... Um, I mean, so they've been through the title and they, they think it's good. Other people are not going to come back to you a month or 10 years from now or 50 years from now probably saying, well, my daddy used to own that piece of property. He didn't sell it to you. He gave it to me. Hmm. Well, he may have given it to them and got a deed and did not record it. There's no constructive notice in the chain of title to say, son owned it but he has maybe a legitimate claim he may be able to come back around in another way say well everybody knew it now you may have to spend a lot of money clearing the title up that's what title insurance is for they will spend their money clearing your title up cloud on title there's our definitions And I'm looking at that bottom one, defect in title, forged deed, lack of capacity. Um, didn't we have that in our contracts as well? If you didn't have the capacity to sell the property, yeah. then it, the, 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 it was void. Mm -hmm. And that's what would happen here. This is what a title policy looks like on the front. 
It starts out and it tells you uh, Schedule A, Schedule B, those are the things it covers and won't cover. Um, it just tells you all the stuff down here and then it breaks out. Here's what we will cover. Here's what's covered. Someone else owns an interest in your title. That's what we just said. The son shows up and said, hey, I have a claim on this property. Well, they will defend it. Someone else has rights affecting your title out of a lease. Mm -hmm. Contract options. We've talked about options and how they work. Well, mm -hmm. somebody could sell the property during that time. Well, this, the person that had the options is going to say, well, no. Right. Mm -hmm. They will come defend them. Someone else has an easement, that's going to show up in the title search because it would be recorded. Uh, the one where the personal easement, where you're just letting somebody come over to your lake and fish, that's not going to be recorded. That's just going to be a personal easement that's not even out there. The new people are going to take that property without that easement on it because that was a personal easement. Once it changed hands, it's gone. <laughs> I can't read the one back there. I have to turn around and read this one. <laughs> I know. I can barely read that one. It's, it was a copy of a copy. Uh, but you get the gist of this. Okay. It's, it's going to protect you against certain things, certain things it won't protect you against. Right. That's all we need to know about titles. That's pretty easy, wasn't it? <laughs> a lot of information, but it's so much. Yeah. yeah. Deeds. Purpose of a deed. Types of deeds, elements in the deed, and oh, importance of recording. I think we just covered that. Mm -hmm. Written document. Don't you think the deed needs to be written? Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think it really needs to be written, just like the contract. It's going to have everything in it that it affects that property. We got two people here. Grantor. That's the give or. The grantees, the gittee. Statute of frauds says it's got to be in writing. We've seen statute of frauds before. Mm -hmm. Acknowledge. Acknowledge is a word you've probably never seen outside a real estate class. That means that it is notarized. And spell check doesn't like notarized either. <laughs> so you got a couple of new little words that you got to deal with. Now, this is, has been a test question. The grantee doesn't sign the deed. They don't need to sign it. They're going to accept it physically. You're going to hand it to them. And when they accept it, that's the transfer, not their signature. The grantor has to sign that deed during their lifetime, and it has to be delivered during their lifetime. Let's just say, I wanted to deed some property over to you and we sat down and I signed the deed and uh, Aunt Terry just has to be a notary and she said I'll notarize that for you and she notarized it and I said well I'm just going to put it here in my drawer and I'm going to get down to the courthouse tomorrow and record it for you. What's going to happen if I never handed you that deed? I kept the deed. It was not delivered. And if it's not delivered it didn't happen. Mm -hmm. Even though she saw me sign it, saw Ontario notarize it, and watched me put it in the drawer. Mm -hmm. It's not hers until it's recorded because I could die right now mm -hmm. and it's going to go into my estate. <laughs> wow. Um, so should, the, should, the, should, the, should, should she follow up on your now she should have said, let me go record it. Oh. <laughs> Here, just go ahead and give that to me right now. <laughs> okay. Because it could hurt her claim. Right. That's what I was asking. Mm -hmm. wondering, should she just uh, follow up? Like, let me see that he actually recorded. Yeah. 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 Um, that's why the attorneys don't give you the deed to go record. Mm -hmm. um, they're going to do it for you. Just well, to make sure. Them. So. Yeah. They got, Even for the attorney, should you follow up to make sure that they're gonna mail it to you? Oh, okay. Okay. And it'll have. We're gonna get to one here just coming with all the tax okay. stamps and stuff on it. Okay. Uh, there's a lot of things going on in the deed. Um, it sounds kind of like contracts here. Must have legal capacity, consideration. What are we getting? 
how ownership's being held, our description, and any exceptions in there. That's what I've just talked about uh, passing during the grand tours of lifetime. Other option is it could be delivered to a trustee. We talked about grandpa putting it in a trust for the grandchild. That's where that applies. Types of deeds. Look at all of These are warranty deeds. We're talking about types of deeds. And they're just not many. Mm -hmm. One's a warranty deed. You think that would have a warranty with it? That's where the name comes from. They're guaranteeing that something is right in this. But we got a lot of ways we an individual grantor to an individual grantee, two, one to two, individual corporate, just all these are different kinds of deeds, but they're all warranty deeds because they're guaranteeing that they did not, let's see, down at the bottom it'll tell us that's what it says. It's being done through special to, to, to. That's not what I was looking for, but a warranty deed says, I have not hurt the property while I owned it, and if there's any claims against this property, I will defend those claims for you for as long as eternity, for as far back as eternity. Anything that's happened back here, and somebody comes in, a uh, son comes in, in to claim, mm -hmm. and a warranty deed, the, the seller has guaranteed that title, or the, actually the title insurance company is the one that, that as insuring it. But they will defend it forever. Quit claim deed. Quit claim, uh, where you'll normally see that is in a divorce. Where one party says, uh, I don't really know what I have, but what I have you can have. Mm -hmm. They're not guaranteeing anything. They're not guaranteeing <laughs> that they even own any interest in that property. But if they did, quit claim wipes it out. Deed of trust, that's uh, grandpa putting it into a, um, no, this one, deed of trust is like a mortgage. Uh, around here we don't use deeds of trust, I don't know of any, it's just mortgages we use here, but in some parts of Alabama they use a deed of trust, and that's just where there's a third party holding the title until everything's done, and then they give you back the title, and that's going back with a, um, um, what's it called, a um, um, uh, reconveyance. Uh, here's our one, what's in them? Warranty deeds, most common, and they call them here a general warranty deed. And your contracts, when you write those, it's got a blank spot where it says the type of deed that you're conveying. Mm -hmm. And normally you're going to write general warranty deed right there. And that tells the, the people what they're getting. Oh, we got one down here. Deeds without a warranty. Oh, don't want that. That would be the um, quick claim deed up here. That one has no warranties in it at all. Then you've got some others. I think we got a slide on those others. Let me see if I can grab the slide before I start talking. Oh, we're going back to the. I don't want to do that again. Okay. Um, there's an acronym for everything you need in the um, transferring uh, title through a deed. It's seeding, C-E-D-D-I-N-G. And there you go down through there, there's each one of our letters. The C, consideration, y'all remember? Good and valuable, we had Sheriff Taylor in here, mm -hmm. had to have consideration, we had a hundred dollar bill here, and that was valuable. We had a little kiss that was good. 
those are you got to have consideration because this is a contract something for something yeah. execution signed by what does that say competent wasn't that one of our uh, legals mm -hmm. description of the property delivery and acceptance what's being conveyed names and then the granting clause. we're going to see all that and i think this next slide okay. there it is <laughs> this is a deed now look up here on the pointer now let's get in front of the screen see the word right there special mm -hmm. that's a special warranty deed you think that would be less than a general warranty deed less protections probably a special warranty deed is what you get when you buy a piece of fore foreclosed property. They're saying, I guarantee, I warrant, I promise, I didn't hurt the title while I owned it. And that's all they're guaranteeing. They're not guaranteeing anything else. This was a foreclosure. You can see right there, special warranty deed. We talked about the recording. That's this up here. Jefferson County, Alabama was recorded um, uh, April the 3rd, 2012. Got the time stamp right down to the second. So somebody else came in with a deed even one second later. This one has got priority. Here are clauses that are in a deed. And there they are, if you look over here, consideration, who the grantor is, who the grantee, the granting clause, legal description, they're all right over here. Exceptions. Um, I don't remember if there were any exceptions in this. Uh, habitium means to have and hold. All that's down there. The grantor gives, must sign, delivered them. We've already covered all that. And recording is called re constructive notice. This was actually a piece of property that was sold by HUD. I don't know if they have HUD's name in here. Yes, Secretary of Housing and Urban Development. This is a foreclosure. Um, my son actually bought this property. I bought the property. Uh, $2,020. This was a house on a half acre of land. We thought it was a deal. <laughs> Bought it, he moved in it like two days later. Got the power turned on, he moved right in into a $2,000 house. Lived there for several years. Mm -hmm. uh, this came off of um, HUDHomestore.com. So if y'all are looking for really good bargains, that's where this one came from. HUDHomestore.com. That's mm -hmm. where HUD puts their foreclosures. Mm -hmm. a little sign, what not? That's not on the test. <laughs> Here's our requirements. Um, this is something that you, you wonder, why do they need to know if I'm married? <coughs> well, there may be a spouse with rights. Maybe you took it as, remember, joint tenants, mm -hmm. right of survivorship? Well, they need to know all this stuff. Um, if it's in a subdivision, we're going to have a legal description. It's probably based on a plat map. That's recorded also. Everything about that property. These are the, just some more of the things that are on there. Uh, here's one of the um, less than except minerals. It may break out which ones. And uh, this one's got a mineral tax that's listed on it. Uh, make sure to notarized, legible, um, signed, exhibits, uh, everything you need to know that needs to be in a deed. But all you really need to know is there are clauses in a deed. And you might want to know what these clauses are. Just look down through there. Taxes they are. Here's a little summary of them. The general greatest protection warrant forever. That sounds like a long time. Mm -hmm. But we have a what's called a marketable title act that they only go back. Uh, different states will be different, but I think we're like 30 or 40 years here. So if no one's brought a claim within that time period against the owner, then the title will be clear. Special warranty, 
that's what we just had with the, the two thousand dollar property mm -hmm. that was a, they don't they've never been to the house they don't know anything about it they got it in a foreclosure and so now they want to get rid of it so they said well we didn't hurt it while we had it mm -hmm. bargain sale um, that's where they're not even giving you that kind of warranty yeah. we don't know it just it, take it like it is good luck <laughs> Quit claim, that's a, normally a, a divorce. I'm just giving you what I got. You got everything else, might as well take this. But you get the mortgage too. Yeah, right. Deed of trust, uh, we got that one. That could be uh, a, the third party holding the title. Um, trustee's deed is that's going to get back to them, reconveyance after it's paid off and then a court order ex, uh, ex, 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 ex executors executor thank you <laughs> covenant says that what was in the, the deed the seller has possession that's what season is they're going to insure it against all encumbrances free from liens quiet enjoyment means that they will protect you against anybody that comes to bother you. It doesn't mean they're not going to, you know, come and hang out at your house. Mm -hmm. This is different from that. They're just promising that they will, uh, they will take care of it. The further assistance is, um, say, they come up and say, okay, um, some say he's got a claim on this property. Well, you just happen to have a piece of paper where son did have claim, but he needed some money and you bought his claim from him. So that would be that the, no, another no, no, no. instrument that you may have to come up with to clear that title off. <laughs> and it goes forever. Constructive notice. We got that. That means recorded, acknowledged, notarized. And it's going to be in the, in the county where it's uh, where the property is located. You might need to know recording fees. Pretty simple. Uh, actually, it's 50 cents per $500. But I put it as a dollar per thousand. That's just a little easier for me to remember. And it's probably um, the 50 cents per 500 if it was like $600, you may not have to pay that whole dollar. <laughs> but I'm betting they're going to round it up. <laughs> um, the tax, the, tax uh, the time stamp, we just saw the time stamp on that deed. First in line is first in time. So if there's a lien against the property, when it's sold, that's the first money that gets spent. And here, property taxes actually go to the first of the line. They're not recorded but they're there always like right now okay you sold property today you're going to owe taxes on it no matter what day of the year you sell it there's probably some taxes due actual notice different from constructive notice constructive is recorded actual is you have first-hand knowledge somebody told you or you went by the house and saw somebody living in it on the way to closing and you say, I wonder if they're going to be out by the time we get back. Ah, we probably need to stop this closing right now and find out who they are and why they're there. Mm -hmm. Because you don't want to have to evict them. You want the seller to have to get them out. And then there may be damages. Mm -hmm. The house is not like it was when I contracted. So the actual notice, if you, you're driving by there and say, that will be a problem. Yeah, it will. Yeah, it probably will. Uh, if it's unrecorded, um, there are say If you do not have a recorded deed, you face a risk of losing your property because there's no record. That's what we're dealing with a couple of slides back. And down here, a lot of the stuff I get off the internet and other places, uh, we give credit where credit's due. This came from these people. There it is, 50 cents per 500 or fraction thereof. We've got another one called a mortgage tax. I don't think y'all have to figure taxes on this test. 
Um, but if you do, those are the numbers you need to know. Fifteen cents per thousand dollars worth of mortgage. And then they charge you also by the page. <laughs> really? Yeah. Three dollars for each. Sixteen for the first page and then three dollars for each. But there's not many pages there. Okay. Yeah, not many pages that actually get recorded. The deeds just one page. Right. And there's your satisfaction of mortgage. That's when uh, you've paid that last payment. Mm -hmm. They are required by law to get you this recorded uh, satisfaction of mortgage within, uh, I don't know how many, a month or, or two. It's a little short time. The mortgage company? Yeah, the mortgage company has to file a satisfaction of mortgage saying you paid your mortgage off. Mm -hmm. If they don't, there's a $200 fine to them. Mm -hmm. Like that's going to hurt them. Problems with deeds. What kind of problems do you think we could have with deeds? Y'all think there could be any problems? I think so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now we got volume. I have to edit that out. <laughs> Credit where credit's due there. Have you ever wondered why you need title insurance? Your home might be new to you, but every property has a history. Title insurance gives you protection from title problems that may surface after you close so you can continue to enjoy your home ownership rights. Some of the more common types of these title issues are 1. Errors in public records. Let's face it, mistakes happen every day. But when they affect your home ownership rights, they can be devastating. Something as simple as a filing error or a mistake in a former deed or survey could create financial hurdles down the line. 2. Unknown liens. A property may also have unknown liens that you may have to pay if not resolved prior to closing your purchase. Sometimes when a homeowner doesn't pay their bills, the company or bank that they owe can put a lien on the property. Then, if you purchase a property with an existing lien, you may be on the hook to pay them. This is especially worrisome when you buy a foreclosed property. Purchasing title insurance can help you identify and remedy these leads before you close your home and ensure your rights after the closing. 3. Missing heirs. Missing heirs can also cloud your title. Family members of previous owners can come forward years after that owner passes away and you purchase the home. If they claim to have ownership of the property, it could affect your rights. 4. Forgeries. Forged or falsified documents can also cause property ownership issues. If those forged documents are filed publicly, it can create an unclear chain of ownership, which can make it difficult to prove your ownership status. 5. Survey or boundary issues. Disputes can also crop up regarding the boundaries of your property. While you might have reviewed multiple surveys of your property prior to closing your transaction, other surveys might exist that show differing property lines. This could lead to disputes when a neighbor or someone else claims ownership of part of your property. In short, there are many different issues that can affect your property's title. Title professionals are skilled at identifying and carrying, if possible, these types of problems before you take ownership. Your title insurance policy then serves to protect you from those issues that may still remain undiscovered. In short, title insurance offers the peace of mind you need when you're ready to make your home buying dream a reality. Okay. Thank you, First American Title. <laughs> I know there's a way you can jump back and forth in this, but I don't know how. Okay. Okay, it take me right back to the beginning. Mm -hmm. uh -oh. And we got that part. Escrow and closing. Tax aspects, responsibilities, prorated items, closing statements, and that just changed recently. Closing cost will shock you and your property and income taxes, closing responsibilities. Uh, this is a local company, South Oak Title. A 
and they made that a nice little summary here. What you need to know about titles. Title, evidence that the owner has got possession. What is a deed? What's title insurance? What is escrow? Escrow, uh, we haven't talked about much, but escrow is kind of like a, a, um, an accounting sheet where all the money comes into this accounting sheet and every penny's accounted for. Mm -hmm. uh, if there's something that's got to be paid off or who's putting money in, there's just lots of things. We're going to see a closing statement in a minute. But this escrow is where all the money is held. And it's also called, a lot of states it's called, uh, you're going to escrow. Here we just call it, we're going to closing. Yeah. But some is, they go to escrow and then everything's accounted for and um, it's done. What is title shirts? Why do we need it? How much do these things cost? Um, we just looked at the sheet earlier about, I see the cost right here, $300 just for them to look all this information up. Well, somebody had to search. Yeah, somebody had to go do it. So there's a cost just right there. Um, title insurance, can they insure it? What are they going to leave in? What are they going to uh, take out that they're not going to insure? And then here we got um, some of your closing costs. They've got a closing cost at $975, $500 for a cash purchase. Because they don't have to do as much work if it's a cash purchase. Mm -hmm. But if there's a mortgage involved, there's a stack of paper that thick. I've been to closings, maybe it's mm -hmm. that thick. <laughs> but it seems like that thick. I, I think they actually go through all of them and then put it back over and go through it again. <laughs> um, and that's what they do if you got two mortgages. Sometimes there's a second mortgage and you can go through all of it again. Mm -hmm. There may be a higher cost than that. Yeah. But this is kind of a, you know, in our part of the business, we talk about commissions. We say there is no standard or going rate for a commission because that's price fixing. Mm -hmm. They're the same way. I'm surprised they would publish this because that's kind of giving other people saying, well, here's what we're charging. Mm -hmm. um, that's kind of in the range. There's a range for the attorneys. Uh, you can find some of them that'll do a finance uh, purchase for maybe 600. Mm -hmm. They may be you know, wanting to generate more business because once you hook up with a closing agent, you get to where you know them and you, you want to use them again yeah. Yeah. and well if they can entice you in with a little lower price you may start using them mm -hmm. but a lot of a lot of things going on it says what can you expect um, this just kind of gives you a, a, a briefing uh, one thing that you need to know when you go to closings is your people your client got to have their ID with them Mm -hmm. I've been to closing and said, well, I didn't know I needed to bring my ID. Yes, know that. Know that right now. Mm -hmm. When you're going to have somebody notarize something for you, you're going to have to show them some ID. That's just the way it works. Mm -hmm. uh, got to have that. Uh, closing now, this is talking about cashier's check. Uh, wire transfer is the way we're kind of moving. Uh, it's, I, I, we haven't done many checks lately. It's just, um, in fact, we had one guy said, I'm not wire transfer. I've never done that before. I bought 100 properties. <laughs> well, things have changed. There's a lot of new rules on money moving around. Mm -hmm. Used to, you'd probably go to the attorney's office and throw a bunch of $100 bills on the table. <laughs> and they're fine. Now, everything's got to be so documented. Um, it'll be wire transferred in. You let the attorney give them the information on where to, where to transfer it because they'll contact and they'll give them a little link and they can go there and their bank will transfer it over for them. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's no money actually moving around. You don't have to deal with cashier's checks. Used to, you had to get this closing statement two days in advance just so they could go get a cashier's check to take the closing. There it is. Take your driver's license or government ID. You don't have to. They don't look at you know, our agents. They, um, and let me give you something on closings while I'm there and thinking about it. You've got your client that's maybe buying the house. 
and the other agents sitting over there with their client, the seller, don't give them a business card. <laughs> I've seen agents do this and said, that is just the tackiest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> that's that's not your client or they've got a client relationship with them mm -hmm. and here you are trying to get them. why are you doing that <laughs> can I ask one question um, on the slide up above it okay. 900 and something is that what the the finance person no is this is the attorney's part oh the attorney's this, this part. is the closing this uh, South South Oak title yeah uh, is this everyone? okay that's the attorney okay I was this thinking is, that it was the yeah in Alabama, all closings have to be done by an attorney. Okay. Actually, they can be done by a notary if the attorney's got all the paper ready. Gotcha. Okay. We do traveling notaries. Somebody can't come to closing, mm -hmm. you can send a notary to their house. Gotcha. Um, but that's probably going to be the next charge, too, because the notary's going to want to pay something, I don't know, $100, $200 or something. Um, that's a lot. Okay, we're, we're, there we are, mm -hmm. back where we were. Um, yeah, this is the, the title company. A lot of them can do closings. Or you can just go to an attorney, and the attorney may do title work, or may have like a, an agreement with somebody like South Oak that they'll do the title work. Mm -hmm. uh, you can do it a lot of different ways. I like one-stop shopping. Mm -hmm. I prefer to have the attorney that's going to have a hookup with a title company so if a title problem comes back, mm -hmm. we don't have two different people we're dealing with. Mm -hmm. The same person seeing this that's going to handle it. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, okay, that's, that's what we needed there. And I guess I'm going to have to go all the way back to the beginning. Can you just click on the one? Yeah, I was going to say, click on the one. Scroll down from your own. Um, yeah, just scroll down on that side and click on then open it up. The, the little, yeah, the little thing on there. Just keep bringing it down. Mm -hmm. Okay, there we go. Closing in this where we were. Mm -hmm. All right, we want to go to this next one. It says, this is not a slideshow mode now. It's, uh, it's not Yeah, active. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Uh, so we got to. Get that back into slideshow. Then we that's slideshow mode right there, right? Yeah, that's slideshow. Yeah. And then let's see, I've got to get back on this screen. And okay, this uses cookies. I guess I'll accept it so we can read it all. Alright, here we go. We've got property tax probation. Ontario mm -hmm. loves these. She, she mm -hmm. had three questions on this. Out of a hundred now, you got three on this one little part. What is <laughs> tax probations and um, millage? Yeah. Well, here, we're, here we're gonna look at it. Property taxes. Let's see, get up there a little bit better. If, if you were buying a piece of property and the sellers already used it for half the tax year, do you think they should pay those taxes for that half a year or you want to pay it for them? I think they should pay them too. And that's what the proration's about. We're going to figure out how much they should be paying. And the example we did the other night, we used the calendar year because it was just easier to show you if it's January through March, you got three months. Mm -hmm. uh, our taxes in Alabama actually go October 1st back around, it's just like our license. Mm -hmm. It's the same tax year. So you've got to prorate it from October 1st, mm -hmm. uh, January 1st. Mm -hmm. But it'll just, um, it's just a math problem. How much is the tax in total? And then how much, how much is going to be debited to the seller, credited to the buyer? Mm -hmm. And they're going to, um, when the title search is done, that's one of the things they find out is the taxes. 
how much of the tax had they been paid mm -hmm. um, we've got a deal going right now uh, supposed to have closed about two months ago and the title company called me and said you know he hadn't paid his taxes since 2014 and this is 2019 they said he may not even own that property anymore mm -hmm. and he's oh, <laughs> Uh, he's trying to sell it. Yeah, trying to sell it and hadn't paid his property taxes. Well, that's showing up on the title search is right away. Uh, going to have to take care of it. You may have to go back and buy that debt or you're going to have to buy the debt from whoever bought it. Mm -hmm. uh, may the state may own it. Uh, there's a lot, of, a lot of ways you can lose title. I mean, yeah, because of these property taxes. Now, once you have figured out and they're looking at this is this 365 that's called a calendar year mm -hmm. they a lot of times will use banker year that's 360 days each <coughs> month has 30 days it's a little easier to do these proration problems if you are given a banker year because here uh, it's 365 they're going to expect you to know January's got 31, February 28, March, you know, big little, big little, you got to, I got to get my hand out and figure out what month we're in before I can do the prorating. Uh, I'd rather have the banker year to work with. Uh, but once you've figured that out and got a number for the seller, that's a debit on his side and a credit on the buyer's side. Now they've got that number, so they're going to say, okay, the taxes next year are going to be maybe the same, they're going to pretend they're going to be the same for next year. Mm -hmm. So they're going to take this number that you had this year and say, okay, you're going to need this much for next year when your property taxes are due. Mm -hmm. So we're going to divide that by 12 mm -hmm. and we're going to get two months of taxes mm -hmm. from you right now to put in an escrow account mm -hmm. along with two months of insurance premiums that they're going to put in an escrow account so when your taxes and insurance are due next time the money's been building up and it's there now let's just say um, for some reason the, the the taxes have been paid in advance it'd be prorated the same way something that could be in advance is uh, let's see um, maybe you've got a, a propane tank that you just had filled with 5,000 gallons of propane mm -hmm. well let's let's figure out how many gallons are in there and let's do a debit and credit on that because it's already paid now we're going to have a debit to the seller no credit to the seller debit to the buyer mm -hmm. get debits and credits straight because oh, there's, yeah. there's going to be a question on them <laughs> Escrow items, let's just talk about insurance, property tax, uh, oh, mortgage insurance premium. That's going to be on what kind of loan? MIP? Um, um, my yes. Oh, well, yeah, it's it's property mortgage property insurance. Mortgage. We'll give it either one. Yeah. Uh, homeowner associations. Uh, that could be a, an item that's, if you, you've got a couple hundred dollars worth of um, HOA fees. Mm -hmm. I think I'd rather that go into this and let them pay it all at once. Mm -hmm. But most of your HOAs, you pay them by the month. Every mm -hmm. month? Yeah, you pay them. Mm -hmm. So I don't think that's probably going to go into escrow. Calculating fees, proration, we've already talked about <coughs> that. Property tax assessments. Um, this is uh, showing you how it breaks out. If it was from July to December, this six months. It's going to prorate one way or another and that your pity remember our payment it's a pity the payment's so high well the the, the p and the i is the principal and interest and then the ti is taxes and insurance so the pity payment gets all all of them all your escrows everything uh, it is um seven o'clock why don't we take a break and come we'll just pretend it went off okay. all right we're back from break gonna look at closing statements now this is the new one called the t-r-i-d triad they changed the name it used to be called a hud one 
Uh, but it covers a lot of the same stuff, but this one I think gets a little deeper. The other one was like three pages, this one's five. Oh, but it does. Uh, yes, closing statement. This one is just a, a generic one where it looks like uh, Michael and Mary, they live on any street in any town. <laughs> so, this is a good one. Mm -hmm. uh, tells us the type of loan, so they're a 30 year. It's for the uh, purchase, a fixed rate. Uh, we don't do a whole lot of variable rates anymore. Mm -hmm. Used to, that was the thing. This is fixed, says it's conventional. <coughs> and it goes down here and tells you the loan amount. They got a $162,000 loan, there's their interest rate, and there's their payment. That's probably as far as most of them read. That's all I didn't know. How much is my payment? Mm -hmm. How much? No, let's buy a cheaper house. Seven hundred and sixty-one dollars a month. <laughs> no. right, well, just from what y'all have learned so far, how much you think they make a month gross? Mm -hmm. Remember what the ratio, the front end and back end ratios were? Twenty-eight. Twenty-eight. Mm -hmm. So that's probably close to a quarter of their. Income. So these yeah. people making it looks like about three thousand a month, maybe. Wow. And they can qualify for that kind of loan. Mm -hmm. Y'all need to get that kind of stuff straight in your head about how much people can afford. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, don't. We got one right now. His budget is one hundred and fifteen, but he likes the two hundred thousand dollar houses. <laughs> of course. <laughs> of course. Well, it's just <laughs> we gonna, we not gonna work. Uh, now this one, interesting, says it's got a prepayment penalty in it. If you pay this loan off in the first two years, it's going to cost you $3,240. As high as, I guess the first month would be that much and each month it'd come down a little bit. I did not think you could have a prepayment penalty in a conforming loan. And this one didn't say anywhere it's actually conforming. Conforming means it meets all the criteria that they can sell it into the secondary market. Mm -hmm. um, so conventional. Yeah, so it's conventional, but we don't say anything like uh, that. I'm guessing there's something that, that knocked this out of being a conforming loan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This alone should knock it out. Yeah. Because you can't sell a, a, a non-conforming loan into the secondary market. We talked about balloon payments, not one of these. This is going to be an amortized loan over 30 years. So that means this is going to stay the same every month. Yeah. Now this is not including what two items? Insurance. Insurance and uh, property taxes. taxes, yes. So actually it's going to be more than this. Yeah. Depending on how much your insurance and taxes are. Uh, down here there's uh, our mortgage insurance. So. Uh, it says it's a conventional loan. I'm wondering why there's mortgage insurance on it. Mm -hmm. Must mean it was above 80%. Mm -hmm. That may be what's knocked us out of conforming. Mm -hmm. It's a conventional above 80. So that may be why they can get that in there. All right, here we got our escrowed amounts. Um, this says it can increase over time. That's your taxes and insurance right here it's going into the escrow and that will go up just about every year that number is going to go up because property taxes pretty much go up every year mm -hmm. and your homeowner's insurance that's also known as hazard insurance mm -hmm. that goes up pretty much every year is insurance based on anything other than just the purchase value value of the house yeah, yeah that's um uh, how much they insure and um, uh, property insurance you got two things that are insured you own the house so the house the structure itself is insured mm -hmm. for a certain amount say two hundred thousand dollars and then your stuff is insured and usually that's half of this other number and then you got some other things that are insured, like your neighbor's house, damage to others. Uh, but just for this, just 
Yeah. 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 She said. Yeah. She said. Got hit by lightning. He was so happy it was burning. <laughs> Oh, it is covered. <laughs> she she or she she. <laughs> uh, so our our total payment is going to be a thousand and fifty. Well, we got estimated. There's where they estimated the taxes, the property taxes, homeowners insurance, and then other, they don't have their an HOA fee in theirs. Closing cost. Oh my goodness, cost ninety seven hundred dollars. Wow. to close this loan. Wow. That just seems like a lot. Cash to close this Yeah, cash to close is going to be this plus a uh, down payment. Yeah. Um, so it's not much down payment. Mm -hmm. That's why that conventional is over 80%. Uh, here are closing costs. They have to break them out. And here you... Oops. Um, just looking up here. Good thing I don't have porn sites. Oh, those are bookmarks. Yeah, oh, yeah, bookmarks. I don't see where I go all the time. First thing I got to do I is, is the money still in the bank? Yeah, right. Uh, but they break out all the closing cost. They got an origination fee of one quarter of a point. Application fee and then underwriting fee. Uh, these are fees that they have to tell the purchaser or borrower up front when they do the application they have to list the different fees that they're going to charge and this is uh, stuff that they're really not going to shop for it says did not shop for these appraisal the appraisal is ordered by the uh, mortgagee mortgagee gets the fee mortgagee gets the door so this is ordered by the mortgage company used to you could pick the appraiser you wanted yeah. mm -hmm. and in fact uh, a, a lot of lenders would have you know one there they just did all their appraisals mm -hmm. now after the, the fiasco of 2008 and everything blew up mm -hmm. um, now they have a pool and the yeah. appraisers are in this pool mm -hmm. and the bank has to go to that pool and pick the next one in line so it's fair. They probably well, that's interesting. Yeah, we, yeah. They um. Well, you have less fraud that way. Yeah. Let's just say uh, I'm a builder, and I'm building houses just one after another, mm -hmm. and I've got an appraiser, and I say I need this one to appraise for exactly. this much, mm -hmm. and I'm giving him all my appraisals. What's he gonna do? No, He's gonna appraise it for what I ask him, <laughs> as long as it's close. To what he thinks he he'll go for that. Now that can't happen. Now it's arm's length. You don't. They don't know who's going to be doing the appraisals. So it the could, banks now order the appraisal. Yeah, the bank orders the appraisal. Mm -hmm. um, seller doesn't order it. The buyer doesn't order it. The 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 mortgagee. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You got some other. Uh, they wanted a, a survey. Eighty-five dollars. That's too cheap for a survey. Wow. Yeah, survey is going to be about four hundred dollars. Wow. Um, I don't know where they got that eighty-five. <laughs> uh, oh, we were still up here. Uh, you're going to have a flood letter nowadays because every the, all of the, um, the the we got so much areas that's flooding now that didn't mm -hmm. flood before twenty years ago. Mm -hmm. um, now they're doing that, and if you're in the floodplain, you're going to have to have flood insurance. Which is going to run the cost up. Um, flood monitoring. They're going to. Have, it looks like they're going to check it in the future. Uh, so you said they didn't do any of that stuff. They just did it one time. Said you good. It's never going to flood here. Uh, tax monitor. They set up a tax fee. I mean, uh, an escrow account. They pretty much all of them charge about seventy-five to do that. Uh, it's tax rate. That should have been done with the title search. That looks to me like maybe a junk fee. Yeah. Uh, they'll load junk fees on you if you mm -hmm. love them. Uh, down here we got services the borrower did shop for. All right, we've got pest. Um, it says pest infection in inspection fee. What we have is a termite mm -hmm. inspection here. 
and a wood infestation report. A wood infestation report has to be done by somebody that's certified as a pest. They've got a name. An <clears throat> entomologist. they got to have papers to say they can do this. But they're looking for damage from other wood eating or destroying uh, things. Let's just say you've got a crawl space. It's dark and damp down there. There are a lot of things that like to live in that environment. And so the wood infestation report, they would look and see if, you know, things are eating the wood. Right. Uh, the termite, he's looking for things. Uh, if you've ever seen termite tunnels, they'll be like in a windowsill. It'll look like a, a little where the paint may be bubbling up, but it's all in a line. Well, you can take your finger and poke in there and it'll just go right through the paint into the wood now. Wow. That's where the termites have been going through. <laughs> and if they find that, everything kind of stops. Because now we've got to do a termite treatment. And then you'll come in and see is there other damage. You know, how, what did they do? If they did a lot of damage, they maybe eat the um, uh, wood around the window. Now you got to replace the window. But to do these termite, so they don't pump poison in the ground like they used to. Mm -hmm. They'll just do spot treatments. Like if we've got termites around this window, they would just treat around here, maybe six or eight feet each way around that if they didn't find them anywhere else. Because wow. termites come up out of the ground in one wow. spot. Wow. So they're probably not all over the rest of the house. They came up here, let's get rid of them here. Um, Maybe you're going to put the bait things out around the house now. That'll be a big plastic like container and they'll put a chunk of wood in it. Mm -hmm. And then they'll come back and check this about once a year and look down in there and look and see if the termites have gotten in this wood. Mm -hmm. Well, if they have, then we're going to have to chew something up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we got off on termites there for a minute, but it was part of this. Um, we got title insurance. There's 650 lenders. When we had lenders and owners, here's the lenders. Um, I guess this other one's the owners. Got title. Uh, there's your um, um, closing fee, and there's the title search. That one says 800. On the other one we had, it was 300 dollars to look at that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They must have better people here doing this. One. <laughs> yeah, that must be it. <laughs> Um, total loan costs borrow paid, 40, almost $4,700. And then down here we got other costs. Recording fees, we just talked about those. Mm -hmm. This one has a deed of $40. Here in Alabama, what would the price of that property be? It's a dollar per thousand. Here that would be a $40,000 property. Okay. And then a mortgage here is 15 cents per thousand. That's a pretty big mortgage at that number. Yeah. <laughs> pretty big. Uh, transfer tax. Uh, you've got this in a lot of states. The state's going to get another little piece. This one got $950, but it looks like that's coming off the seller's money. Mm -hmm. Uh, now we've got uh, initial escrow that we're going to set up. Our insurance is $100 a month. Property tax is about $100 a month. So we get two months of those and that's going to have to go into the escrow. Mm -hmm. Down here we got, uh, what we got, HOA. So they are in a homeowner association. Up here we didn't have a, a, an escrow for them. But down here I guess they're just going to pay them by the month. Some of the HOAs charge you to change ownership there. It was a junk fee for them. They'll charge you, uh, surely, no, it's, no, that's a contribution. Prior to this, processing fee. They charge them $150 just to put your name on the, on the, the computer. Home inspection fee, $750, that is high. Looks like we got another $750 charge. Or is that a credit? Seller paid, buyer paid, and these are costs before closing. You'll see that written as POC, 
paid outside closing. But down here we got a home inspection fee of $1,500. That is extremely high. Most of your home inspectors here, normal site, you know, a couple thousand square foot house is going to be four or five hundred dollars. And you get a really nice 50 page report with pictures and his suggestions if he sees something that needs extra attention because he's not a roofer. He's a home inspector. Mm -hmm. But if he looks up on the roof and he's not getting on the roof, he has no business getting up on the roof, he could fall yeah. off. So he'll put his camera up there and look. Mm -hmm. And if he sees something that he thinks needs attention, he'll say, uh, you need to get a, a licensed roofer to look at this. Mm -hmm. Same thing on the HVAC system. He'll look at it, looks pretty new, he'll note that. Mm -hmm. He may take the cover off of it to look for rust. Mm -hmm. Because if you've got a gas system, gas interacts with the metal in the system and it just rusts away. It doesn't take long and your uh, fire chambers are full of rust. Well, you, it won't work right. And he sees that, he's going to say, you need to get an HVAC guy to come clean this. And then they'll come fix it. Mm -hmm. All right, what else we got? Um, we got a home warranty. $450, and this is being paid by the seller. Yeah. This is something every buyer asks for. Mm -hmm. We rarely get a contract through here that the buyer's not asking for a home warranty. They're going to be, uh, right now, I think the cost is about $600, $700, somewhere in there. Mm -hmm. And that covers the basic uh, systems. Now, if you want to get extra coverage, like you've got maybe a, a swimming pool, uh, they'll insure that too, but six, it's going to be an extra fee. Did you say 600 Yeah, six, 700 something like that. We've got some brochures out here from uh, a couple of companies. Used to, the home warranty companies, if you sold one of their home warranties, you got a kickback. It was like a $75 kickback. And this went on until about three years ago. And the whole time I was teaching this stuff, saying no kickbacks of any kind got to be at or before closing. And here that come up, $75 check. <laughs> uh, but they, they've stopped that now. What else we got? Real estate commission. Yay! <laughs> I hope that's a great big number. Mm -hmm. uh, we got it broken out into both companies, Alpha and Omega. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that's number one and two. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 5700 for each of them. That's, st well not standard, that's normal for to split equally. You don't have to. The uh, listing company, whoever that was, may have done a whole lot of, like I mentioned, Matterport you know, spent two thousand dollars getting the pictures and the, the drone and, and all the other stuff. They may not want to split it equal. Mm -hmm. They may want to split sixty forty or something. Uh, you don't have to split equal. They did. All right, we got time. There's our owner's policy up here. We had the lender's policy somewhere. Yeah, right up here, the lender's policy, five hundred, and then down here, the owner's policy is a thousand. Ooh. Here, we saw that chart earlier, if you buy one, the second one's $50. Mm -hmm. And normally, here in Alabama, it splits if there's a mortgage involved, like this one has a mortgage, it would split equally. If it's a cash sale, the seller pays the title, mm -hmm. all the title. But you can also... Um, have another little line somewhere along in here that says seller contribution and it'll be a debit to the seller of maybe five thousand dollars and a credit to the buyer here for five thousand dollars where the seller's paying five thousand of the buyer's closing cost mm -hmm. to cover some of these things that's real common too mm -hmm. <laughs> we got five thousand down we got total closing costs nine thousand and the seller's total closing costs twelve thousand but we had you know, almost all of it right there mm -hmm. just the commission mm -hmm. and I think I've told you all this before they think you're worth it in the beginning 
Mm -hmm. But the minute you get that contract, they want you're worthless. Yeah, they, they wish they'd never met you. Uh -huh. What me? I got it. Got you didn't work but ten minutes. You came out here and got the got the paper, and then you emailed me the contract. I never even saw you again. You getting that much? <laughs> Most of them don't realize it splits between the companies either. Yeah. They think you're getting eleven thousand dollars. Yeah, but the uh, other agents getting half of it. I like it the way they break it out here, and they can yeah. actually see it. Right. They don't, you're not getting all that. <laughs> all right, so cash to close. We had a, a number up there, cash to close. Here's how it breaks out. Uh, total closing cost. Um, what's that? Um, foreclosure? Yeah, that was a something, uh, probably a credit on the escrow account. Uh, down payment. These are things that can't change either. These have got to stay whatever they told you in the beginning. Uh, 18000 down, they had a $10,000 deposit, that's your earnest money. <laughs> and some of them don't understand they write an earnest money check, they thought that money just disappeared. <laughs> they don't know where the money went. I, it happens a lot. They'll say, well, what happens to that earnest money? <laughs> well, it'll show up here as a credit on your side. Right there, it's showing up as a credit, 10000 and what we got seller oh the seller gave him a $2,500 I just mentioned contribution there it is $25,000 settlement I mean seller credit uh, some other kind of credit see details K and L that's on down here here we put K and L total deal price of the property 180000 closing cost uh, almost ten thousand. That's a that's a lot of closing costs for that buyer. <laughs> wow. Um, yeah, that's a lot. We got one one of one of the instructors sent me a closing cost that was like a hundred thousand dollar loan, and there was like ten thousand dollars worth of closing cost on it. And he said you need to have a good relationship with your lenders, and that's why. So could the could the seller I mean, could the buyer dispute some of those charges? Well, they, they gave it to you up front. Yeah. You sat down, when you did the application, yeah. they went down through here and said, okay, here are the estimated costs. In fact, that's a section right here. Mm -hmm. Here are the estimated cost, and a lot of them are carved in stone. They can't change. Mm -hmm. Some of them can change percentage. Some mm -hmm. of them can change a lot. Okay. Um, but um, they got to tell you what all those costs are up front. And if you don't know, Right. As a buying yourself, well, that sounds okay to me. Yeah. I want the house. Yeah. How much? That they there? What are they worried about? Getting in the house. Getting in the house. Yeah. Getting in the house. But what are they really worried about? How much? How much, how much is it per month? <laughs> how much? The only number they looked up it was that what seven hundred fifty dollars we saw was the first number. That's the only one they look at. Yeah. You're right. <laughs> You mean I got to pay taxes and insurance on top of that? Now it's a thousand dollars a month. Who? You didn't tell me that. Uh, here we got summary borrowers cost. Over here we got sellers cost. That's what it shakes out. They'll have one on one side, one on the other. Uh, up in the first part, when you break it, you've got a, a debit and credit. Mm -hmm. Here they're just all debits. I guess debit. No, some of these. Credit to what? Carry it over here. Debit here. Exactly. So this one's got to bring $14,000 to closing. Mm -hmm. And the seller's going to walk away with $64,000. I mean, is he had a mortgage up here that he had to pay off. There it is. Pay off first mortgage. He had $100,000 he owed. There was a closing cost. Most of that was commission. Mm -hmm. And here's a here oh, here's a, a proration right here. Some HOA dues have been paid in advance. It looks like eighty dollars worth. What else we see up there? We need to look at. There's some more prorations right down here. Taxes, three hundred sixty-five dollars, and that was from January through the middle of uh, April. That's what the taxes are provided.
And this is called the triad is yeah, now just, used to just be a, you don't need to know the initials, that. just it's a closing it's statement. A closing statement. Uh, and then this tells them some other stuff. We talked about assuming loans. This one tells you, no, no one can assume this loan from you. Can we uh, just call the loan? No, unless you get behind, mm -hmm. then they call it, and that's called acceleration. Mm -hmm. um, late payment, there's your penalty. Negative amortization, you don't have a negative amortization loan. I had one. Mm -hmm. It was called an FHA 245. Um, second house we bought, prices were going up every day until we bought the house. And we bought a FHA 245 loan that starts out at a lower Entry. payment. Okay. And then each year it goes up, I think it was 5% each year for like seven years. And I'm gonna tell you, they qualify you on that first year payment. Unless you're making, what, 35% more seven years later, you're in a hole. Mm. <laughs> we actually owed as much on the house 10 years later as we paid for it. Because this negative amortization, interest loads on it, I mean, just you're just going in the hole every month. Mm. But you think, Houses prices are going up 10% every year, which they were then. Mm -hmm. Seven years from now, I'm rich. <laughs> Absolutely no. No, it didn't work no. out that way. No. I would never advise anyone to get a negative amortization. I mean, a negative yeah amortization loan. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, partial payments. Uh, that says they may accept partial payments. Um, our policy here on rent is we don't want partial payments. We want it all at once uh, because if you like send them a notice that they've got to pay in so many days or get out, well they can send you ten dollars and now you got to go through that whole process again. Mm -hmm. So that's well, would that would that apply if a person was trying to? Well, that was just for mortgage, not for rent. If you pay every other. We, so that would be like a partial payment. Well, you would set that loan up and when, you, when you're talking to them, here's how I want it structured. Okay, okay gotcha. Yeah, you wouldn't come back and change it later gotcha. on because there'd probably be another fee for that. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, security interest, ah, we are granting a security interest. You're, you're giving them a lien on your house right there. Yeah. Escrow, uh, that's just what's going in. Your estimated, uh, what is that, uh, insurance. There's your estimated taxes. And there's a little cushion. They're only allowed two months to hold. So if the cushion gets too high, then they'll send you a check. They can't keep that extra money. That's something that came about from these new closing statements. Used to, uh, the mortgage companies could you get a year's worth of taxes up front mm -hmm. and just hold them. Not right. <laughs> ah, oh my goodness. Remember our trigger terms? Mm -hmm. Remember what, tri what that means? Trigger terms? Mm -hmm. If I tell you one thing, you have to tell you everything. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Remember what one of those things were? How much? Yeah. How much is the total payment? Remember that was one of the triggers? Because they say, oh, your payment's only going to be $799 a month. Mm -hmm. Well, if they tell you that, they're going to tell you how much the total payment is, how much the interest is, uh, how many payments, everything. Mm -hmm. And there it is. That these are our disclosures on the trigger terms. Total payments. What was that? Our loan was $180,000, wasn't it? I think it was $160,000. $160,000? All right, so $285,000 is the total you're going to pay. Just the finance charge, $118,000. Amount of finance, yeah, there's our amount of finance. There's our, oh, APR is 4.17. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. That's not what you said. That's not what you said. 
You said my interest rate was 3.875. That's not the... You don't see APR here. APR will have this plus fees. There's a fee for me. That's the way to look at it. A fee for me. So that 3.8 turned into 4.1, I think it was, and some change. Did I go past it? Yeah, there we go back down. Down. Yeah, there we go. To the right. Yeah, here we go. Here it is. Yeah, 3.8 turned into 4.1. <clears throat> And what is this total interest percentage? The total amount of interest that you will pay over the loan term as a percentage of your loan. 70% of the total <laughs> interest. So why did, the, why did that APR change from the annual percentage rate at the top? Uh, there's some other fees. Wow. We maybe had a, some discount points. I didn't see those listed in there, uh -huh. but there's some more fees on top of that 3.8. Oh, okay. they brought it up. Brought to, it up to yeah, this wow. is. So that's the 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 letters you're looking for. Usually, like, you don't say any percent. It'll say APR. Mm -hmm. That's what you have to disclose when you said, "Well, your payments are $799 a month." You got to tell them these things, including the true rate. <laughs> do they go through and explain this page by page? Or Not like I do. Yeah. No, no, I no. think they should. Uh, <laughs> uh, they'll answer any questions you want, but yeah, it's more like you got to ask questions to ask. Yeah, right. That's why I was so kind of like a little side note. That's why I was telling my mom I don't think it would be wise to, even though they're just, I think they're doing the um, offer, the um, they're writing a, writing an offer, but she needed to see what she was signing mm -hmm. like, with paper. Explained, yeah. And she explained it, but we're looking at a screen and you got all these little things like click here for mm -hmm. your signatures, click over here for initials. And it's one thing to have it here, even though you, she's not going to read all of it that night, at least she can see it versus mm -hmm. this sheet on a screen and then we're strolling up, you know. That's why they're doing that. It's all electronic. But that thing and people are not, not talking to each other yeah. anymore. Like if you want to know something, you send them a text. <laughs> they're going to pick up the phone. That's true. Text them. That's true. Um, I don't see it as one of my bookmarks up there, but uh, we've got, um, what's it, dot, dot something, dot loop, or dot, dot, you stop, you sign. And what you do is you take like a, a PDF. Mm -hmm of the contract and you load it into this program and then you can come back and, and put where you've got to sign. Mm -hmm. That's what you did. And you just fill those in and then once they they get it, they can just click, mm -hmm. click, click, That's click and just go down through there. Mm -hmm. Now if you want to change something, like the price, mm -hmm. then you go up there and you can uh, add mm -hmm. a text box. Mm -hmm. um, change that something. and then put the thing for initials. Yeah, that's what she did. She tried to explain each sheet as we went along, but it's like at the end of the day, like uh, Steve said, how much do I need to pay? How yeah, much, how, how much, much is it per month? Yeah. And then uh, I guess two buyers just want to get out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, how much per month? <laughs> we talked about deficiency judgments, mm -hmm. like if you go into foreclosure. And they can only sell this house. Um, you borrowed 162,000, and they sell it for 130. Mm -hmm. They can come over here and get a deficiency judgment against you for that balance. <laughs> Up until um, I don't know, three, four, five years ago, the Internal Revenue would also send you a tax bill for that amount. That's income oh, wow. to you now. <laughs> Okay, here's just your contact information. Uh, you have to know who all you're dealing with and how to get a hold of them. Real estate broker, that must be the buyer's agent, that must be the seller agent. Yeah. And that's important on these things. Mm -hmm. Hi, did y'all enjoy that closing statement? Mm -hmm. We covered a lot of stuff there in just you know a few minutes. Mm -hmm. yeah. But that was under the... Uh, Closing cost says uh, try, try it right now. Yeah. See if I can watch it.
Yeah, this is a, yeah, I got a lot of stuff. I've got extra in here that um, you could get by without ever looking at it. Mm -hmm. uh, but that one is a good one to actually look at again. Uh oh, that didn't sound good. Okay, that link is not good. Property tax prorating, all right, we, we kind of covered property tax prorating already. We did yeah. a, a little section on that. Uh, so this is probably some examples of how to do it. something interesting. I know y'all know this already. When you go to places on the internet and look at things, they'll send you ads. Mm -hmm. You can see the kind of stuff I'm going and looking at. Mm -hmm. PowerPoint templates. I want to bring my, 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 my I don't like my PowerPoint, so they need some work. So I've gone out and looked at things, so that's all showing up. Yes, yeah, it's, it's interesting. That's, that's, they're taking your data, they say. Yes, they, they know who I am and, and no telling how long ago I looked at that. I know it's been two months <laughs> since I looked at that. Yes. They'll keep putting it in the All right. Uh, I think we've already covered this pretty good. But, uh, you look at your tax bill, figure up all the taxes. This one, uh, California says it runs July through June of next year. Ours is October 1st, back around to September 30th. Mm -hmm. um, this one's got a, a tax bill of $12,600. California, that's probably a $100,000 house. <laughs> right. Tell me their property taxes are steep, mm -hmm. steep. <laughs> Ours, actually, Alabama has some of the lowest tax rates in the country. Really? Mm -hmm. We do. Um, but that one is, uh, they've got 12.6, they should have made that easy and said it was 12,000 for the year. Mm -hmm. And then we could have almost done it in our heads. But they want you to think a little bit. But here you just, uh, is just showing you, we've, we've already done that. Mm -hmm. Count the number of days. Now here's a, the um, closing October 15th, there are 14 days. So the 15th is going to belong to the buyer that have 14 days that are debited to the seller, that they were there. The day of the closing here looks like belongs to the buyer. Some states, it's maybe different. And then we're just going to multiply by the number of days we still got left. We've already covered that pretty good. Let's move on to the next thing. Uh, constitutional powers of the state. We had uh, something earlier about, um, what was that, uh, about whose power this was? The zoning. The zoning. The zoning, the state, that's constitutional power of the state that they push down and allow the counties to do it. It's not a county power, it comes from higher above. Mm -hmm. Why do we have these taxes? My dear wife thinks that, well, once you pay for the house, you shouldn't have to pay any more taxes. <laughs> I agree with her. <laughs> a lot of people do. But once you pay for the house, you're still going to use the roads? You're still going to call the fire department? She doesn't understand that. Well, I paid it all these years. Yeah, you got those services all these years, too. You want good services. Our uh, tax rates, our mill, I'm terrible, mill, <laughs> loves that word, <laughs> um, will be higher in a, in a, like here we're in Hoover, uh, we've got fairly high taxes in Hoover, probably uh, eight, nine mills. Uh, we've got another little city over here, Vestavia, 
their school system, uh, like I think it's 95% of the kids go to college. Mm -hmm. they, they probably hired higher paid okay. teachers, got more resources mm -hmm. for them. Got another one just on over the hill called Mountain Brook. 99% of their kids go to college. Mm -hmm. Their taxes are probably 12 mills. <coughs> Yeah. And the houses are not a hundred thousand either. They're gonna start at four and go up. It wouldn't it'd be probably a normal tax bill in Mountain Brook would probably be ten thousand dollars. Be more like California. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's true. Uh, but you're paying for what you get. Ad valor means according to value. They don't just pull numbers out of the air. They do um, kind of a Blanket, Mountain Brook, let's take them for example, they know that values in Mountain Brook are about, say, $400 per square foot. Mm -hmm. Well, once they've got, you know, a bunch of samples, a big enough sample that they can say <clears throat> $400, then everybody's going to pay $400. Even though you've got a, a rat hole that <laughs> needs to be torn down, right. you're still going to pay $400 per square foot for it. Um, for the assessed value. Mm -hmm. That's the tax man's opinion. Now from that assessed value, they're going to come down and if you're living in it, you're going to be taxed at 10% of that assessed value. Mm -hmm. If you've got it as a rental, it's or it's a second home, or whatever, uh, you're going to be taxed at 20% of that assessed value. So it could run up if you got a rental house in, in Mountain Brook. Mm -hmm. I hope you're getting a lot of rent <laughs> just to pay the property taxes. But the reason people would rent there is to put the kids in That's that school. Right. In fact, in our business, property management, that's the first thing they want to know. What well, school well. system is this? Mm -hmm. Well, I tell them Birmingham, I say, what else you got? <laughs> I say, I got something in Mountain Brook, but it's five times as much for the same size house. Mm -hmm. I don't care. Mm -hmm. No, my, well, I, I kid people. I went to the Birmingham Public Schools. Even when I was there, they didn't have enough money to teach us all the letters. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I believe that. You don't see spelling errors. <laughs> you'll, you'll see spelling errors every now and then. And you just forgive me and say, oh, he went to a low tax school <laughs> district. <laughs> Uh, okay, so our millage rate. Millage. Keep it in mind of what you would pay on your house. Mm -hmm. Say you've got a $100,000 house. Mm -hmm. You're paying, say, $1,000 a year in taxes. That's going to be um, your millage rate. Pretty much $1 per thousand, mm -hmm. which is a, more, a ten. So if you got an assessed value of a hundred thousand, you're paying a thousand dollars in taxes. That's a ten mil tax rate. Put it to something you know, mm -hmm. because they're going to give you a, a goofy number of the tax rate of the tax millage is five point three percent, and your house is worth uh, two hundred fifteen thousand dollars. Well, you're going to have to bring that to something you know, and then work out from there. You said. If the taxes are $1,000. $1,000 on a $100,000 assessed value. $100,000 assessed, okay. That's going to be, actually, your property taxes will be figured, your own, you're living in that house, it's mm -hmm. going to be figured on 10000 Right. And you're paying 1000 that's a 10 mil. 10 mil, okay. Now, if you're renting it, it's going to be it's double. Higher. Mm -hmm. But if you're renting it, that's still, a, that's the buyer, I mean the Yeah, the owner's paying that. Paying that, right. Yeah. Okay. Well, we've got some that, uh, well, I, we got the two or three in Mountain Brook, the, the property taxes are like 10000 a year. And we're getting 2000 a month in rent. Ouch! Where, <laughs> so, Ouch. where's the balance at that time? Uh, well, do the owner just... Well, they got to pay it. Or, <laughs> It is automatically a lien on the house. If we don't rent that house for at least five months this year. <laughs> wow. Um, I guess they're building the equity though. Well, yes, and so those properties are $400 a foot. Here, we're at $100 a foot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, the, the numbers are, won't, 
rental property doesn't work in situations like that. Right. Because you've got a $400,000 investment mm -hmm. that you're only getting $2,000 a month for. On a four hundred thousand dollar investment, you want to be getting four thousand per month. Right. One percent is what you want to look right. at as kind of the right. the first hurdle. I want to get one percent of the value of the house as rent. Mm -hmm. Then I'm getting it there because they're getting appreciation. The houses are going up faster in value, and mm -hmm. over time they do better. Yeah. Uh, you can put a house on the market uh, there. And the next day you got a contract because the supply and demand. Mm -hmm. They want their kids in that school. Room. <laughs> um, wow. uh, if you don't pay these taxes, then they're going to put your name in the paper uh, along about uh, March, mm -hmm. February, March. It'll be a, I mean, it'll be most of the paper that day. <laughs> Everybody that has not paid their property taxes for the past year, here they are. And now people will go down through that list and find those houses and decide, do I want to pay the taxes for them? <laughs> well, let's just say you can, you've got somebody in Mountain Brook, you know it's a $400,000 house and they got a tax bill of $10,000. Uh, you can go buy that $10,000 debt, it's called a tax certificate. Now you've got a lien on that house and and you've got to pay the taxes for the next three years and then you can claim a tax uh, deed then you still got to hold it a few more years before you can sell it mm -hmm. there are weird rules on the taxes people make a lot of money buying these liens uh, they get a 12 percent return on that ten thousand dollars yeah oh really yes. yeah yeah that's they're why they're that's the main reason they buy them. Oh, I thought that this, the, the, the homeowner could just pay that debt, that tax debt, and it's back theirs. And they're going to pay the debt plus the 12% interest. Okay. Um, and if they okay. don't pay it, uh, it's a lien. It's a lien, and then eventually the person that bought that debt may end up with the house. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are not paying attention. And there are people that don't know like um, we're married and I'm over here in the real estate business and you've got a candy store you don't know what I'm doing over here and I'm buying and selling properties is just part of the business mm -hmm. I may end up with five or six properties that I've bought over the years that you don't even know about mm -hmm. and then I fall over dead who's gonna pay the taxes mm -hmm. yeah nobody even knows you don't know and then you'll end up losing right. this property. I've seen it happen. Mm -hmm. um, and it's usually just that situation because husband and wives mm -hmm. can buy property in their own name mm -hmm. and the other one doesn't have to know. Mm -hmm. well, it's probably a bad marriage if you do it. Right, like it really that. is. No communication. <laughs> yeah. What'd you do today, huh? Well, I bought a house in Mountain Brook <laughs> for $10,000. Right. <laughs> I really didn't want you to know no, about that. Absolutely. <laughs> mm -mm. Um, I don't know that. Did you know that? <laughs> now, property taxes are deductible from your income taxes. Mm -hmm. uh, now, we are not accountants and tax advisors or anything like that. Uh, the rules changed last year to where the, um, uh, what's it, the standard deduction has gone up so much for a couple. It's twenty four thousand, I think now. Mm -hmm. Not many people have twenty four thousand dollars worth of interest that they're paying, mm -hmm. and you got to have a lot of other deductions before this ever even becomes a deduction. <laughs> that used to be a good selling point in houses. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, your interest is tax deductible. Well, now it's probably not. Mm -hmm. Here is a note rate. Um, we got we have Mountain Brook on there. I don't see Mountain Brook. Yeah, Hoover. There's Hoover. Uh, six point six five, six dollars and sixty five cents per hundred dollars of that taxable value. Mm -hmm. So this one would have six hundred sixty five dollars worth of tax per 
on that $100,000 assessed value, which would be um, $10,000 in taxable value. Mm -hmm. So you'd have $665 worth of tax. Uh, let's look up here at county. $4.40. All right, well, the county doesn't have as many services they have to provide. Mm -hmm. um, Alabaster, Birmingham, Calero. Um, <laughs> what's the lowest one on there? Looks the like lowest. county. County looks yeah, like county. the lowest. And you got Indian Springs. Just Indian Springs. Spring. You think Indian Springs would be high? High pop up. That's what I was just about to say. Yeah, <laughs> Chelsea. Chelsea's the same as County. Oh, Chelsea. Yeah, Chelsea's the same as County. Yep, Chelsea. I don't know. Well, no, because Chelsea is kind of like. Oh, yeah, that's true. Well, look here. That's 2010. Okay, yeah. Chelsea really wasn't cranking up yet. That's why. That makes sense. Yeah, it's probably double that now. Yeah, absolutely. Now, here's our state, county. This is an addition, too. Oh, wow. Oh, Hoover's got an extra tax. Just with the schools. <laughs> oh wow! Next sheet. This class is very important. Uh, we got about thirty. We got about thirty minutes left. Wow! When you do an offer, you need to do, and well, I need to do. You are required to do a net sheet, uh, also called an estimated closing cost. Um, you're required to do this, and it's based on your best estimates, which you will learn as we've been going through this. I've been telling you things like an attorney cost mm -hmm. this much. Mm -hmm. Can y'all tell me right now what an attorney's going to cost to close a deal? Four hundred dollars. Is it nine hundred? About nine hundred dollars. <laughs> we needed a lot of fours. Yeah. Well, we cover a lot of stuff. Yeah. But some things just stick. stick out, yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Um, it's, on, you, it's based on best estimates, which is, you know, it's about $900. Mm -hmm. Well, the, he may be $800 or $1,000. Mm -hmm. $900 is close enough. This is an estimated mm -hmm. closing cost. It says, the law says, shall prepare an itemized statement of all costs to close associated with this deal. Mm -hmm. that, that's the law. you got to do that. Mm -hmm. But just for your side. Mm -hmm. You don't have to know what the other side's paying. Mm -hmm. um, you can't use the um, um, I say good faith estimate, GFE. Mm -hmm. That's what the lender gives them on that uh, closing statement we had, we had some things up there that said these costs cannot change. Mm -hmm. uh, they give one of these when they do the application, but you can't take theirs and just say, here's my net sheet. <laughs> right, you have to do your own. You got to do your own because you got other costs in there. Mm -hmm. you, you've got uh, the commission, which is not going to be on that uh, good faith estimate. Okay, just to your side, every now and then uh, we'll get an offer come through and the other agents and their their side closing statements, I mean estimated statements in there. Mm. And we get to look at it and say, oh, you're charging that much for commission? Maybe we can go up. <laughs> <laughs> we did we got one uh, not long ago. They had charged their buyer um, six hundred and ninety five dollar transaction fee just to do business with them and they charged them an extra half a percent on the commission. Whatever commission was being offered, if it was, they were, they were requiring a 3% commission on their buyer agency agreement. So they had charged them, because we were offering two and a half, and they charged them a half a percent extra on commission and $700 transaction fee. And so do they still get half of what your commission is? And then yeah, extra? we were offering we were offering two and a half percent. Right, and now get the extra two. Yeah, well, no, they were they were offering two and a half. We were offering two and a half for them to sell it. Okay. Uh, they got a buyer agency agreement with their buyer saying the buyer is going to pay them three percent. Wow. Right. So there's a half a percent there that they're going to have to come out of pocket. The buyer's going to buy out of pocket okay, that's what because we didn't offer three percent. Right. Wow. And I'm thinking, wow, that's gutsy. Charge a, 
a $700 transaction fee on top of saying, give me some more commission. Some more commission. Yeah. All your paperwork, three years, that's the number. I hope y'all get that on the test because that's a pretty much give me. Um, closing statement, you're actually required to make sure they get the closing statement, but you don't prepare it. That thing that we saw, mm -hmm. it's going to be attorney prepared. Prepared, okay. But you need to know how they work. Right. Because you need to check it. Because the attorney, he didn't fill that out. It's so assistant. Yeah, the, well, it may not even be his assistant. It may be they're breaking somebody in new at the reception desk mm -hmm. and they're overloaded today and say, you want to learn how to do closing statements? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I got one one time I had three arrows on it. First one I looked at was the commission. And it said minus five hundred dollars. And I said, wait a minute. I'm not taking a five hundred dollar check to closing. Yeah. No. Uh, it was the five hundred dollar minus was the earnest money we were holding. Oh, okay. And they had messed up on it. It should have been um, our commission listed there and then minus five hundred dollars they didn't have the commission listed mm. wow. and that's why i say you need to check them look at your commission first and yeah. it's like, oh that's right everything else must be good <laughs> right <laughs> on the real estate commission's website they've got an index called um, briefly legal and you can go on that briefly legal tab and put in just about any topic you want to know about. Net sheets, um, recad, whatever you want to know about, you can type that in and it'll bring up any articles that the Real Estate Commission's General Counsel wrote on that topic. And usually they're real short, one, one little page, but it'll get everything you need to know about net sheets. I think we've already covered everything you need to know about them. Mm -hmm. uh, so, if y'all want to bring this up tonight, about midnight, <laughs> trying to come down from that cafe high. Right, that's the real estate commission. Yeah, uh, it's A-R-E-C dot Alabama dot gov. And that'll, that'll get you to their homepage. And you're going to have to go there anyway to get a student number. So once you go there, you'll, 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 you'll see the tabs across. Here is the one that we're using now. Uh, this one uh, they gave us I guess about two years ago. They broke it out into purchasers and sellers. And you see you got different things on here. Here purchaser, you got lender fee. Here you've got broker fee. You got the things that the seller would normally be paying. Back here, things the buyer is normally going to pay used to they were both on the same sheet mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and everybody got to see what everybody was paying i like that better no, it's good. easier to explain to them why it's this way if you can say well they paid half of it right right are you sure they paid half right. of it <laughs> That's what I was yeah. here you, you can't <laughs> show them um i need to fill one of these out so you can kind of see but um here you would have like attorney fee and Normally it's going to be split. It'll have in the contract split or don't split. Okay. And pretty much everyone splits. Okay. Even the ones that split, they're going to come back maybe and ask you to pay some more closing cost. Well, they got half of them right there, and they're going to try to get the rest of them <laughs> on yeah. a, uh, uh, another place. <laughs> Uh, but all the, all these things we've already talked about every one of them come up with a total and then down here that's how much they should be expecting to bring to closing and then here um, and you have to change it with the counter um, offer and the counter but normally the only thing that really would change on this would be like the brokerage fee mm -hmm. if you dropped it much say $10,000 that would have an effect on that line. Mm -hmm. But these other things, termite, attorney, this, these things are not changing, no matter how many counters you have. Most of the time, you won't know what their mortgages are. I just put to be determined here. Okay. Um, because you won't know what that is until 
they send a letter to the mortgage company and they send it back saying, as of this date, yeah. uh, this is what it'll be. But they know pretty much what they owe in the house. Okay. Um, we like to do them at listing as well. That's not required by law. It's required for you to give one when you do an offer or when you get an offer. You have to do one for your side. Whether it's customer or client, you still have to do one for them. But we think it's a good idea to do one at listing as well. Well, if I'm sitting down with a seller and he said, well, what do you think we can get for the house? Mm -hmm. And I've done all the comps and I said, well, um, everything around here is selling for about this. Yours is probably a good price would be one ninety nine nine. Yeah. Is that what I'm getting? No, that's right. Some of them think that's the check they're getting. Mm -hmm. No, we need to we need to no, educate you right now. Right. There are a lot of costs that are going to come out of that one ninety nine. You're probably down around one eighty five maybe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And don't forget your mortgage. <laughs> Because the, the attorney's not going to forget it. He's going to have a little line down there. First mortgage. Oh, you got a second mortgage too? A HELOC because you went to Europe? Well, that Europe trip's got to be paid for today. In full. Oh my goodness, we're right down at the end. Special process of foreclosures and short sales. What is a foreclosure? No longer own this house. I mean, that's pretty much what it is. Yeah. Um, I went over to Black's Law Dictionary and, and pulled up their definition. This is straight out of the Law Dictionary. Process and Chancery. And say, I went to Birmingham Public Schools. I don't know what that word means. I have no idea. Um, <laughs> Existing mortgage redeems the estate defeated and lost to him, and the estate becomes absolute property of the mortgagee. That's the mortgage company. The mortgagee gets fee. Um, being applicable when the mortgagor has forfeited by non payment money due at the time of mortgage point. All right. We got equity of redemption. We have two rights of redemption with a foreclosure. Let's see if we've got those in the next one. Um, yeah, here we go. Yeah. It's an operation of law. You can't just go there and say, I'm taking the house. There's yeah. a legal procedure. You've got to take them to court. you got to go through the whole process and get possession. Mm -hmm. And then you may actually have to have the sheriff put the people out of the house because mm -hmm. they won't leave. They have nowhere to go. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Power's off, water's off, but they're still there. Ooh, this place smells bad. <laughs> Woo. We have Alabama as a judicial. So court action foreclosure is required. We got two redemption periods here. The equitable is when you still have equitable rights in it. You can get your payments caught up at this time. Or probably they, they've already told you we don't want you we want the money mm -hmm. so that means you got to come up with all the mortgage money mm -hmm. and some fees mm -hmm. some junk fees mm -hmm. maybe some attorney fees they got a bunch of fees they're gonna put on you mm -hmm. they say it costs about 25 percent for the bank to foreclose a property mm -hmm. Because you got a lot of cost in there, and then you got the real estate commission that's going to go on top of that when they resell it. So they're looking at about 25% loss. They would rather you come in and redeem it, mm -hmm. and they won't have to pay that 25%. But let's just say you don't, because you didn't have the money to make the payment for the last <laughs> four months because you're unemployed, and what? Yeah, where am I going to come up with $180,000 this week? Right. I can sell some blood. <laughs> Got so a lot of it to get there. So I just time is uh, plasma for four hundred dollars. I think it is. Got to sell a lot of it. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, the guy that actually invented the machine that separates that's from Birmingham. Oh, man. Mm -hmm. okay. Um, uh, that's not on the test. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, before the so before now, 
after the sales. That borrower, who was the owner, has got one year from the date of the sale that they can come back. Maybe they went to Las Vegas, they had a little bit of money left over, mm -hmm. and they went to Las Vegas and won a bunch of money. Mm -hmm. And they really, really want that house back mm -hmm. because it's in the school system they want to stay in. <laughs> And you know, there's a lot of other reasons they may want it back. I've I've been doing this a long time, and I've never seen anybody do it. Once it's foreclosed and gone, it's pretty much new people moving in. Mm -hmm. But you have that statutory equitable is when you still equitable rights in it. Statutory is by law, one more year you can come back and and redeem your property, pay all those fees. Mm -hmm. Now let's just say someone bought it and they went in, you remember the water's been off and the power's been off and yeah. it's nasty in here. Mm -hmm. They spent a thousand dollars just cleaning it out. Mm -hmm. Had to get a dumpster. You know, they, they had to come in and put new carpet, new paint. There's a hole in the roof. They did, let's just say $30,000 worth of repairs. Mm -hmm. That's a lot, $20,000 worth of repairs. Well, when you redeem it, you got to pay them that money too. Mm -hmm. Now, they won't allow someone to overdo it. Mm -hmm. Like put in Persian carpet. And right. <laughs> it's a standard gold leaf pants. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, that's no yeah, reasonable. Now, you got one more down here. We already talked about deficiency judgment. Mm -hmm. Uh, your hundred eighty thousand dollar mortgage. They sold the house at foreclosure auction. The sheriff sold it for a hundred and thirty. Mm -hmm. uh, the difference between that hundred and thirty and one hundred eighty is fifty thousand dollars. You would get a deficiency judgment against you for fifty thousand mm -hmm. dollars. Just what you need, another judgment. Mm -hmm. Bankruptcy oh, wow. is just right around the corner. <laughs> Absolutely. Short sale. Uh, our experience with short sales is nothing short about it. It's a long, drawn-out process because once you get the bank to even look at an offer and they think they're going to take it, about 15 vice presidents have to sign off on it. We've actually had offers that they, two or three of them, have signed off and said, "Yeah, we'll accept this," and then it gets on down the line and they say, "No." Oh, wow. So it's it's a long drawn out process. Mm -hmm. You can't just get a short sale because the market crashed. Mm -hmm. Remember 2008? Houses are yes. worth yeah. half of what they were. Mm -hmm. Well, you can't just call the bank and say, well, I want to sell it for what it's worth now. They're going to say, no. You've got to show us why you can't make the payments. Right. you still got the same job you had. Right. Nothing's happened to your income, mm. to why, why should we give you a short sale? You should be able to pay the payments. Now, let's just say you were in a car wreck, mm. broke your back, mm -hmm. you can't work, maybe for a long time. That's a hardship. Mm -hmm. You can give them a hardship. Here's why I can't make the payments. And they'll say, okay, we'll accept a short sale. And you say, well, how much will you take? They're never going to tell you. Yeah. They're going to say, bring me an offer. Wow. And it's going to have to be an arm's length offer. You can't just say, okay, mm -hmm. I'll bid $50,000 on this. <laughs> right. They're going to know about what it's worth. Right. Uh, and then you give them an offer, then they're really going to learn what it's worth. Mm -hmm. They're going to drill down and there it'll be. Uh, but there's some documentation, all this stuff going on. It's just days, here's 45 days or night. It just, it's nothing short about it. It takes a long time and a lot of work. Yeah. But if you get one, you deal with it just like any other sale. You put it on the market at market value. Just because you know they're going to take a lot less, mm -hmm. um, you still have to ask what you think it's worth. And then negotiate down. Mm -hmm. Did he disclose that it is a short sale? Or no, no, no. Um, like to the buyer, if you put it on the market. 
You know, I don't. With the, I don't think there is a disclosure saying that this is a short sale because okay. that would hurt their right. And you're absolute. You're representing the the seller. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if I you say, "Well, this is a way. short sale," mm -hmm. now you have probably hurt their bargaining position. Yeah. yeah. So I don't. I don't, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. One more thing. We got just a few more minutes. Warranties. Mm -hmm. Warranties. People get this confused. You'd be shocked how many people confuse these. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't know the difference between home insurance and home warranty or home inspection. <laughs> They're not all the same? No. <laughs> home insurance, also known as hazard insurance, mm -hmm. covers, they, they, they call them perils, such as fire, tornado. There's a list of things that they cover, and there's a list of things they don't cover. One of the things they don't cover is rising water. Flood. They cover falling water. <laughs> not rising water. Yeah, they cover falling water, but not rising water. Rising water is covered from flood insurance. Mm -hmm. The people in New Orleans didn't know that. Mm -hmm. They got flooded from above and below. Oh. Yeah. Uh, but know that. Um, You've got owner's insurance. Now, there's a tenant's policy. If you've got tenants in the house, we require the tenants to have insurance, renter's insurance. Mm -hmm. And the reason is a thing called subrogation. If they damage the house, we're to, the owner's insurance is going to fix the house mm -hmm. and then sue them. The mm -hmm. And if they don't have insurance to cover them, then they're in deep trouble. Mm -hmm. And I don't think renters insurance is that much because mm -hmm. really it's only covering your stuff. Mm -hmm. So but it's technically have. covering more than your stuff because like you said, if the owner has to sue for something that you've done, mm -hmm. they're going to go to your insurance. Right. Which in return, your insurance probably will sue you for the money that they've had to spend out for your money. <laughs> insurance is just such a rip off, I'll oh. call it. I say we've got insurance here now. Mm -hmm. Had it for uh, less than a year. Mm -hmm. We're just learning about it. It's crazy. It, it, just to qualify somebody for insurance, I thought just call them. I need insurance. Right. Oh no. Right. Right. Oh no. Who are you? Mm -hmm. Which credit rating? Which in? What? Did, tell me more, 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 yeah, more. You pay more. You, you got I say, no credit. I say you. You had an insurance claim on a wreck four and a half years yes. ago. Yeah, tell me more about that before we quote you a rate. <laughs> That's crazy. Though. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, next one, home warranty. You think, isn't that kind of like insurance? No, home warranty covers breakdowns of system like the air conditioner. And it, we had one, we did that statement a minute ago, it was uh, $600, wasn't it, for the home warranty? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, well, that's for one year of protection to cover basic systems. Um, new construction is going to have a warranty on it, so you don't need to buy one of these if you buy a brand new house. Um, well, we got um, home inspection. We've already talked about that. That's just a, a home inspector. He took a class, a 60-hour class, just like you're taking, that teaches him different things about houses, how they work, and what to look for, and mm -hmm. different things. Um, and then he does a surface look and gives you a really nice report. And he'll tell you right here, if the roof and the shingles are kind of curling up, mm -hmm. well, that means something. That means mm -hmm. there's too much heat in the roof mm -hmm. causing these to curl up. Or we got two issues. We've got a roof that needs replacing, and we probably need to think about ridge vents or turbine vents or some mm -hmm. kind of way to get air out of this house so this doesn't burn the roof that you had to fix to put six thousand dollars on a brand new roof. Right. Mm -hmm. Time insurance, um, we beat that one up pretty good tonight. Mm -hmm. Over public home warranty, uh, this is their uh, site. You can go there and it'll show you about uh, how warranties, where it'll tell you everything <coughs> they cover, the cost, 
the extras that you can cover uh, and um, how they pay, how you pay them. And that just gets a little deeper in it. This is about the builder's warranty. Uh, Alabama requires builders to either give you, um, I think it's um, some, some short warranty, and if they don't give that to you, they have to give you a longer one. Okay. So they're going to give you pretty much the builder's warranty. They'll pretty much bumper to bumper right. for a certain amount of time. Because uh, when you move in, you're going to find, well, this door won't close. It's not, it's hitting the wood over here. Well, you just call the builder and say, right. I've got this little list. Yes. If you ever work with a builder and sell a new house, you will go through with your buyer with some of that painter's tape, that blue painter's tape, mm -hmm. and you're looking around and you see something like that, mm -hmm. you take a little blue, blue tape, tape, put it right there, and then you look at this and you walk out of this and say, oh my goodness, everything's broken in here. <laughs> There'll be blue tape everywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, but they will send their finishing crew in mm -hmm. and fix all these little things, the door that wouldn't close, they, they'll fix all that stuff and then when you move in it's pretty much ready to go. Mm -hmm. Now you have other systems in there uh, like your appliances. Mm -hmm. Those are covered under the appliance warranty and it starts when you buy the house, not when the builder bought the appliance. Right. Um, HVAC system, it's going to have a manufacturer's warranty on it for a certain amount of time. Mm -hmm. Systems that were put in, the builder doesn't cover, but somebody else does. Mm -hmm. oh, there's the screen we were looking for. Oh, oh. And we're 12 minutes early. Oh, wow. You want to sit around for 12 minutes and talk about titles or go home? Up to y'all. We are going home. <laughs> no, going home. Wow. Guys, I appreciate you being here. Uh, Monday night we'll do something else. It'll be just as much fun. Okay. I can't I'll read it from here, but uh, I couldn't see it. Uh, oh, it looks like a real estate practice. The practice okay. of real estate. That's another that new one they've added. That's a new one, yeah. Uh, but see, a lot of stuff you saw tonight, yeah. you've seen before in other sections. Right. Should the practice of real estate not be the um, um, law? Like, Part of it's got a lot of things in there. It's okay. three hours or two and a half hours oh. worth of stuff. Oh. Um, okay. What they did is they, they changed the outline and they took the old one and knocked out a few things and then added some sections. Oh. Like on oh. property management, they went from eight questions to three. Okay. Well, we used to do a whole segment on property oh. management, oh. but now they've tightened it down so much We'll do property management, and there's another one called disclosures. Uh, we'll do both of those sections in one night. Oh, okay. 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 Uh, where disclosures you saw all over the place before. Recap, lead-based paint. So they're tweeting it and saying this is what it is now. Yeah. Okay. 